Yeah, I, I want to make a point uh, about the, the the use the, the try to to avoid the the security script plugin to in the Jenkins uh, shadow library. Uh, we have a, a really big like, shadow library, and we don't need to to approve any any script or or use that plugin for anything. We can uh, we we will manage to to do everything that we want without have to work around the script security plugin with uh, scripts, with uh, binaries, with other things. So uh, I, I think that this is not required to, to use the plugin. You can always find uh, some way to, to do the same thing in, in a best way that is uh, keeping the security plugin in, in there. There are some plugins like uh, pipeline uh, utility steps, uh, like uh, not API iterator. For me, for example, it was always a case when I needed uh, to do custom scheduling. I was using Note iterator API, which would allow me to query nodes and uh, schedule my pipelines, uh, uh, my uh, subtasks uh, for parallel on pipelines using them. But uh, yeah, still uh, there are many cases when uh, direct access to binary API would be beneficial. And uh, for you, Yannis, uh, what uh, are the common use cases? As long as you're doing it in a global shared library, I don't think you hit script security. If you're trying to use it in a um, in your own pipeline or a folder one, you will, but not in global. Yeah, it's exactly uh, this. We we are loading our library uh, in the runtime, so uh, I think it has uh, restrictions uh, as the library which is connected to to a folder. And uh, uh, there's too much code already to rewrite, rewrite right? So um, that's why we keep using uh, permissive script security plugin. It's too hard for us to uh, rewrite our old code uh, in order to not to uh, interfere with script security. Is, is there a reason you're not using a global one and just a folder one? It should just be. If you moved it to global, then I think it would just work. Yeah, yeah but but we can't. We use a library step to load our library dynamically. We need this for versioning. In our case, a lot of the scripts are part of the uh, parameters in the UI. Uh, we're using the active choices um, plugin that uh, creates uh, sort of interactive cascading parameters and also uh, creates for us these um, HTML and JavaScript elements that we're interested for more interaction in um, introducing graphics libraries, uh, scientific libraries, imaging, and so on. And uh, yeah, all of those for us, we need to go and, and approve those uh, scripts. <clears throat> For versioning, we use uh, tags in the hit the repository, and we have a, 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 a current tag that is used in, in all the pipelines, and we have some regression or, or wherever. We move that tag that is the current to the previous one, and we uh, fix the, the issue in the time. We release the, the, the library 10 times, five, between five and 10 times a week, and we manage to have the, the library in version it without any issues in the three years that we are using the library more or less. Yeah. I should say that I don't think I have deactivated the um, security plugin uh, or use the, the other plugin that the permissives um, uh, permissions, whatever it's called. Um, but we have uh, tinkered around with a uh, what was called a wasp uh, um, renderer or something like that in the um, in the startup of Jenkins, so that it will allow HTML and things like that to to be rendered. Sorry, Olga, I don't know if I'm using the right nomenclature for that one. No, that's fine. Um, so, uh, this one of the topics, like you were saying about 
the usability. Um, so I want to be the voice as well from some of the users that we have at Elastic. Like some of them find really hard when you run so many things in parallel on a pipeline to debug what's going on, right? So that's one of the issues we hear about quite often, how to make this easier to debug from the console output and so on. Um, because sometimes it doesn't even reload correctly the, the logs uh, in the UI. So that's probably one of the issues uh, from, from the point of view of the usability I would like to highlight. And also about the usability, I think that's also a good point. Um, the one regarding uh, to make the life easier from the end user, how to restart a particular stage when the build of that particular pipeline fail. It's not working in all the cases, and that's probably one of the key areas as well, how we can make people way of working with the Jenkins uh, pipelines easier, that they don't really need to wait for, as I already hear, like some builds take hours and so on. So how you can only run a particular stage of a pipeline easily without going through the entire uh, pipeline as well. That's something as well I haven't here. I haven't found an easy way to do that, and that's why I listen from our users quite often as well. So there's probably a couple of points that I would like to point, just in case we don't have time to work. the presentation of what we do and how we do things in Elastic with the AJ. 